In the last video, we started making this tray. In this video, we're gonna finish it up. This pallet is set up to let us do the top of the tray and the bottom of the tray in the same run. I start with a raw block of aluminum here. When it gets finished, it gets flipped over and moved to this back position where the back side then gets finished. I covered this machining process in my last video, so let's just... Well, that was easy enough. Actually, I just noticed something that's not quite right. There's supposed to be a fillet here, but it fades away to nothing. And this fillet over here seems a little deep. The tray itself is only three thou oversized, so that couldn't be the issue. I used the probe to check my fixture. This should say 855, so we're only about a thou off. So that's not the problem. I just checked cam and honestly, I don't have a clue what the problem is. Everything should be working right. I'm just gonna hope that it was like old code or something. So I just regenerated it and reposted it and hopefully that fixes it. I'm gonna run another tray and see if there's a difference. So that worked and I can't tell you why. The next tray off the machine was perfectly fine. I guess it was just a bug with Fusion. But let's take a minute to talk about business. Today is the 30th of May and I'm planning on leaving my day job around the 1st of August. That's just 62 days from right now. This is what my DTE bank account looks like. I've got about $1,500 in the bank and I've spent about $300 more in the past 30 days than I have made. And I'm only up about $400 for the year. Now this isn't as bad as it looks because I've been investing a lot of time and money in things that will pay me back in the future. And I have a few more projects this month that'll push me back into the black. That being said, this is definitely not a firm foundation for a new business especially when I'm planning on leaving my only source of income, my family's only source of income in 62 days. I honestly, I honestly don't know how to get designed everything to the point where it will support me and my family, but I got about two months to figure it out. Right now I'm hoping that doing Kickstarters is going to be my lifeline. If I can just triple the size of my, the Kickstarters that I have been doing, my current Kickstarters, and do four of those a year, that is enough to fund me and my family. So it's not impossible. I just need to figure out how to get those extra sales. Currently, I'm working on a Kickstarter for those titanium flexure carabiners, and I'm hoping that'll be a big win for me and get me started off right. I'm pretty happy with my current design for these carabiners, but I want them to be brightly colored. I'm tired of boring, just like metal colored products, and I really want to bring some like bright design the everything flair to these carabiners. So in order to do that, I need to get my Cerakote stuff set back up. This area right here is the future home of my Cerakote booth. It doesn't look like much yet, but we'll get it there. The next step is to put up some plastic separating the Cerakote booth from the dirty dungeon. I'm pretty sure I can take these boards that are left over from the counter and put them in up here to be able to staple the plastic to it. The plastic went up no problem. This probably isn't a permanent solution, but it'll work for now. The thing I need to figure out now is how to vent out this window without ruining the window. Not that it's in perfect shape, but I still want to be able to one, open and close it so I can keep my heat or cooling in, and two, I want to keep it in good shape. The problem is this window only opens 16 inches and my box fan is 20 inches. I suppose you might be able to get smaller box fans now that I think about it, but I think the better solution is to basically leave this unmodified and to build a little box coming out from it that's removable. I'll build the fan into that box and have a filter in front of the fan. That way everything here will stay clean because it'll be protected by that filter.
the frame of the window box is done, I just need to figure out one, how to hang it, and then two, to cut openings for the fan and figure out how to attach that and the filter. Other than that, it should be good to go. This is a little bit janky, but honestly, this works just fine. I just have a board on the bottom and a board on the top and it just friction fits in there. If this doesn't work in the long term, I'll put some sort of board here with like a bolty attachy thingy there. Um, but this might work for now. All right, it's not pretty, but I have a way to vent my Cerakote fumes. And that's what it looks like from the outside. I can feel air from here, so I mean, it's definitely working. And I think I can open and close the window from the outside if I need to. The next step is to enclose the booth. So I need a wall coming off there. I'm gonna try to keep this booth relatively small, but I still want enough room to be able to move around. It's definitely not pretty, but we officially have a Cerakote booth. I did everything I could to build this with as low budget as possible. And I think all in, it cost me about a hundred bucks if you don't include some of the stuff that I already had. Like the biggest cost was two by fours. I needed six two by fours and they're like six bucks each right now. So that's like 36, 40 bucks. Then there is a box fan behind here for another 20 bucks. The filter is another 10 bucks. Then I also bought the air nailer specifically for this job and the plastic for both the dirty dungeon and the opposing wall here. My favorite part about this is it has the lights going all the way around. This means when you're here painting something, there is really even lighting with no shadows. Before I moved into this new shop, I used to have to paint outside and it was miserable. I scrapped so many parts because I'd be trying to paint like in the dark by the one light that was on the garage and I just couldn't see what I was doing. Having a nicer booth is really going to add to my Cerakote quality. The other reason I built this booth the way I did is that I know I'm gonna have to remake it at some point. I've never actually had a paint booth before and so I don't know what I need or want. So I did it cheaply and quickly knowing that I'm gonna redo it in like a year and when that time comes, I will do it right. Yes, I know that that attitude will bug a lot of you, but doing the wrong thing the right way is just a big waste of time. Back to business stuff. I have an idea on how I can grow without spending a whole lot of money. I have a reasonably sized Instagram account and I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel. I've never really exploited that for my own gain, but I think it might be worth it here. Dear Send Cut Send, would you be interested in working with me on some upcoming projects? People who will see Send Cut Send as their path to starting their own business. Um, if this works, one, it helps them out, but two, it'll also really help me out of my R&D costs for the carabiners. I guess we'll see what they say in the next video. 